G'day, Glenn, the lab, you're back again. Right, so, I think it's a C Q G Q G Q U. what is it? It's a bloody, uh, it's a GQ. It's GQ Patrol. 2000, uh, 93, 93 GQ Patrol. And we're going to do some stuff and things. So, the... I'm doing really well this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Cedric that we had in, that we put a half cage, a roll bar, a roll hoop, a uh, whatever you want to call it, in the back of that. We also had to fix up the exhaust a little bit. It was hitting a bit, uh, hitting ground. It was a bit too low. Just uh, hadn't been built quite right. It was close, but not quite perfect. Uh, so we fiddled with that, fixed that up for the guy. And funnily enough, the... Um, GQ, got it right that time. Patrol behind us here that you can see. Uh, fix up the exhaust on that. Someone else built that. It's not quite right. The customer's not happy with it. And um, funnily enough, there's another GQ patrol out there, long wheelbase. This one's short wheelbase. And you can fix the exhaust on that. Someone's done an exhaust. It's not quite right. The customer's not happy with it. But there's some other things on this one that's actually. Um, fun and exciting and um and cool so let's have a look at what we're doing there this is look a snorkel kit for a gq patrol so this comes from trindles i think it might be does it say on here no anyway so they give you a couple of templates and you put those on the bonnet they give you a there it is there a piece of metal to make the bonnet strong again after you've cut holes in it a airbox some silicon some Hose clamps and a clear cover to go on your earbox and some other stuff and things. So we've got to come over here and we've got to use the template. Um, it doesn't look too bad for paint, does it? It could do with a cut and polish and it would probably come up really good. But we've got to literally hack a hole in this. Looking at those templates, it's going to be... So it might be along this edge here or something like that and around here and so we've got to take the bonnet off and rip into it should have got the customer to give me a hand to get that off while he was here but never mind we'll sort it and um then you put some holes in here four four millimeter holes five four millimeter holes something like that and um screw your snorkel on there so that'll be fun let's do that by the magic of um the internet Looks better without a bonnet, eh? Looks awesome. Um, so, template, stick template onto bonnet, cut hole. Excuse the noise from the rain, it's turned a bit yucky outside, never mind. Uh, so, there we go, chop chop. That's all welded up and excessively poor VHT paint job on there, but well, some of it's okay, isn't it? That little bit in the middle there. <laughs> It's okay. That's only just to stop it rusting until he gets around to getting the bonnet painted properly. If he decides to do that, if he doesn't, he can tidy that up himself easy enough. Just give it a sand and, I don't know, get some bloody, it's just gloss black, isn't it? Gloss black it instead of satin. That's still wet and it's drying, that's why it's shiny. And then polish it in and you'll actually hide that okay, I guess. That's over to him. So the destruction manual says you do that. And you put this back onto that, and then um, you get this, and you whack it on there, in the hole in the bonnet, and you drill some holes in here, put the rubber spacer on it, put some screws in, she done. That's that installed. Um, there's an air box that goes here, that battery has to go over there. The two batteries get turned 90 degrees, and um, it's a tweak that has to be done on the airbox. Apparently, the owner of the car, Darren, he said that this distance from here to the other side is perfect for this to fit in the battery box, but they've gone and welded these bosses on and made it too long. So, we've got to sort that out while we're at it. Should be easy enough. Get on with that tomorrow, probably. Still raining. So, I showed you that, cut that hole out, it's actually looking nicer now, the paint's dried a little bit, it's still pretty rough, but we'll stop it rusting until such time as he might decide to repaint the bonnet, or 
not care because it's a four wheel drive and um, don't want to get too fussy about appearances. It's pretty tidy, isn't it, really? But um, that's certainly not quite up to the standard of the rest of it. So there you go, that's done. Part one of the job is sorted out. I've got that looking pretty good. Seems to have a pretty good um, gap the whole way along there. Height between here and here is quite reasonable. Finger gap. Five or ten mils here. Quite a big gap around there, but that's just the way it is. It was based on this template, and I'm assuming... Yeah, we could move that across a little bit. That'll move across with the silicon on there anyway. Um, I'm assuming the bonnet opens. I'll try that shortly. Right. Rained a lot last night. Stop now, so that's good. Less noise for you guys. This uh, vacuum canister was moved from under here. It was interfering with where the snorkel wanted to sit, so I've just bunged it out of the way for now. I'll figure out where that's going to go when we've got uh, air box and our silicon bend in here because they really can't go anywhere else. It's just hoses going to that, right? So we can put this canister pretty much anywhere in the engine bay. Just run the hoses there like it could live up here and be fine. So we'll deal with that. Um, and then there's the um, intake hose. And obviously the battery has to go away somewhere else. So, um, and there's an air box here. It doesn't need to be here anymore. Ideal size to put that canister, isn't it? So that could be an option, put that canister there. Gives it longer vacuum hoses, make it work better perhaps. And um, look into moving that battery over there. But let's get on with the bling bling job of um, putting all that stuff on there. Battery out and on the bench, earth cable disconnected. Also on the bench, main, um, main battery cable runs up through, you can't see it's too dark, through here, across there. Over that way, over there somewhere, it's going to join in with the battery cable for the other one. So I've got to pass that back through all the front of the car there and shorten it up to suit when the second battery goes over there. I'll wait until we've got this all under control before I do that. So um, this is the minor technical hitch with the, um, with the air box fitting into the battery bracket area here. Several ways to fix that. Um, Put a hole saw over the top of that, bore it out, push it flush, weld it back up, done. Do that on all four of those and you'd be good. Um, drill a hole through the middle of it so that you know you're in the right spot. Not that matters because you drill holes in here anyway. Grind that off flush, put a rib nut on there, done. Alternatively, drill a hole straight through it, grind that off flush, just put a nut and bolt, done, fixed. Um... Even just grind them off flush, put a hole through the bottom of that and put a rivet nut in the battery tray which you can't see, that you can now see, down there and that would also fix it. So there's a lot of different ways to get around that small problem. Deleted mounts, now fits in there and yeah like I said we've got to chop out the bracket because our pipes are hitting it. Now, can you hear that noise? It's very faint. It might be difficult for you to hear. That noise is a little alarm bell ringing in my head. And it's telling me that the great big 4 inch diameter silicon 180 degree bend might actually have a bit of trouble getting around here. With that in the way. That in the way. That in the way. <laughs> to get to where this turbo intake is. Now, I'm not sure if this has been done before and people are like, yeah, yeah, it works. Or whether this is something that's been um, invented and we're, we're the guinea pigs for making this work. Now, that has to go where it is there, right? So bracket, bracket, and it's got the 90 there, so we can't shift it that way much possible that can go back a bit straight away just the, the sheer length of that um, 180 degree bend sorry about the hood prop being in the way there it puts puts the edge of this actually in the radiator so that's silicon you can cut it it's got reasonably 
long legs you can probably take an inch and a half off that two inches and bring it back so we would sort of clear the radiator maybe not so much the fan shroud and some other things and this pipe here for the air conditioning we can be brave and bend that if it gases out well it's the way it is we tried to make it work for him so it's it's not going to be a walk in the park as far as all this stuff goes but i think we can make it work so we'll carry on we'll see where we end up Alrighty, sorry about all the wobbling. Um, so, cut out those sides. Clearance for the big pipes and the silicon there. It still doesn't fit. And the reason for that is when we measure from there to there, we have just short of 320, depends on how you hold the tape, about 317 or something like that. And when we measure the box here, we've got 320 so when you try and put 320 into 317 that doesn't work funny that um hammer time just hit it with a hammer then it'll fit Woohoo! it's actually raining quite heavy at the moment so apologies apologies for that fits now so i ground a little bit off the welds down around the bottom as well just to give us that little bit more smacked out the edges of the tenant. so like that is a, a very snug fit now in fact you almost you just bash that into place and not need to worry about mounting bolts but I'll um, bang a couple in there somewhere I'll figure that out I think I, I quite like the idea of figuring out where I can put a couple in the bottom just two with riv nuts and that'll be fine that'll hold it won't go anywhere it's pretty snug as it is that's quite a tug on that it's not going anywhere so just to secure it just to make sure that actually looks to be lining sorry not the camera lining up better now that's actually going to be okay we won't need to trim the end of that so that's cool it did look like it was an issue before won't be now let's see if um See how this front one goes? It's definitely not looking very positive at the moment, but we'll figure it out. Not going too badly so far. None of these things ever just bolt together. They reckon they do, but nah, they don't. So pop that out of the way. Having a look at our plate here. There's a bit of, bit of light to help the situation. Looking at that going, oh yeah, it's double skin, so rib nuts through that. Could be potentially a problem let's have a look at the other side and see what's going on there and um this is awesome under here that's a bit bright that's better for you there's already some captivated nuts there and um being a four-wheel drive there's quite a lot of room there so all i need to do is put that air filter box back in there and um, run a five millimeter drill up through those m6 bolt holes nuts captivated nuts whatever we want to call them um, we're done. Run a six from the other side without drilling the thread out. Um, put a bolt in. Good as gold using factory doofa doofas. So that's awesome. Happy with that. Done. Fits. See? Bolts. Done. Bolted in. Bomb proof. Right, silicon. That won't be easy. Let's see if we can get that canister back in there. Um, this one mmm whoops spoke too soon that bar of fitting there is a bit high actually a little bit in the way of where our silicon coupler will come through doesn't look like it from here uh, it might be more apparent from here there you go a bit easier to see from this angle it's not by much and I'm wondering if that air box was actually supposed to be in some sort of mount so it's a little bit higher up so a little rough perhaps but there's a tab on the bottom of there I'm just top side whatever holding that pipe so just cut that shorter tacked it back together and put some paint on that just lowers the whole profile of that system there problem solved done that's all it needs to be um, bolt it back onto its original mount put the hoses back on we're done now well, that part of the equations resolved right so we've got past those vacuum hoses and stuff Silicon elbow is actually not long enough. There's the bead there. So 
two options, either a longer silicon elbow from somewhere, which is possible. I'll ring the mount shop. They might stock something that has longer legs on it. Cut that down so it's the right length, so it goes on there and will seal. I mean, I could put a hose clamp on that, but I'm not stupid because it's likely to come off, and then you'll go in water and the seam of the engine. So, um, can do that, or get another length of four inch, I might have some kicking around, four inch aluminium tube, and just extend this, whatever that is, 30 millimeters or something, so it's long enough to do the job. Now they're kicking around in my scrap metal box, that's exactly what we need. That is the perfect length. Could weld it on there. It's a shame because I mean that welding's nicer than mine. <laughs> I'll do my best, but it's not going to look as nice as that. That'll be all right. Um, yeah, so that's um, better than driving into town and getting another one of those. I'll just get this whacked on there, and that'll be that problem solved. Then the air filter can go on here, and then the lid can go on that. And then we're that far, and then we've got to get around the corner. There's a piece of aluminium tube to do this bit. We've got to sort out this silicon around the corner there. Or we might end up going into town anyway and getting some aluminium um, aluminium elbows. And um, what do they call it? Lobster back to get around the corner. That could work. Here we are. That's him. We'll weld it up. Actually, not. Not terrible. I know it's not as good as what the other stuff was. This is beautiful. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's got to be something wrong with it, otherwise it's not art. Art isn't perfect, it has its defects. That's why um, it helps with it. So, so, now that will fit. And that'll be good. And then it's lunchtime. Yay. Okay. So, we've got from there... Down there, down there, around there. Got that sorted. So I'll have to put that vacuum canister back in. Or get some more hoses and stick it over here. I think that's probably easier. Um, might have to take that back off to get that canister back in. But hey, whatever. Um, bent that air conditioning pipe. We're now above this plane here. So I'm going to see how hard it is to get around that corner with that silicon u bend actually don't think it's going to happen because of where we are with heights and stuff but it'll be, it'll be close it might require like i say a bit of a lobster back aluminium type deal the problem with that is as soon as you try and join the aluminium onto here you've instantly lost that much ground just having a silicon coupler here silicon joiner so then you've got less room to get your radius whereas if you use a solid silicon piece you can start your radius immediately and when you've got really limited space like that, that makes a big difference. Alrighty, so I had lunch. Looking at the uh, 180 degree silicon 4 inch coupler and the 90 degree one that was in there, um, the 90s have got a sharper radius than the 180s for manufacturing purposes and all that sort of carry on. It, it results in um, this bend happening sooner, so less distance taken up that way. But then, of course, you've got to join, so you'll gobble up more real estate that way. We don't really care about the real estate in this direction. That's fine. We actually could do with a little bit more anyway because of where this is. It's this distance here is our problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I haven't trimmed this coupler yet. As you can see, a clever man would be able to take a good 10, 15 mils off the end of this and still have clearance from the radius. Well, the radius doesn't start to well after the bead on that. So we can trim a bit off that. That shifts that whole lot that way a little bit. And as you can see with the 90, at least we can physically get it in there. But you can see it's all squished up. It's hitting the radiator hose and it's hitting the aircon hose. If you take it 10 mils that way, things will be a lot nicer. The other thing I can do is take a hunk out of this top radiator hose and move this across and that will give us a lot more room there and I think at that point we'll get away with it are you ready for some absolute brilliance here we go oh worked 
managed to make it fit. So um, minimal clearance on our aircon pipe here, but enough. That's how they are. I've not removed any brackets that normally support this or anything. That's just, they use a thick enough pipe apparently. It holds the weight of the hose and all that. So whatever. I see that quite a bit on cars, so that's all right. They must get away with it. And um, oh, it's a bit hard for you guys, not much light down there, but we do have, I can fit my fat finger in there. We've got clearance between radiator hose and our pipe. And um, obviously we've got clearance, heaps of clearance between radiator and all that, so it worked. So being 24 volts and having two batteries, there's a big battery cable, that puppy there, that runs from where there was a battery here to where there was a battery over there. It goes through the front of the car. I had this feeling that if I cut off the terminal that was on the end of it and under the insulation tape, I'd be able to just pull the cable through. Save us a whole heap of hassle. We don't, um, we don't have to take the radiator out and everything to get all the clips undone. We can just smash that out and leave the, um, cut the insulation off in here as far as we can, this spy wrap or whatever we want to call it, split tube or whatever, and um, let's put our battery cable out, mean as, obviously we're not going to lead, need that full length anymore, so we'll re-terminate it with some new terminals, it will be good as gold. Alright, so next day, so all that's under control, that's looking not too bad, pretty good. And um, some serious debauchery going on over here. Choppy choppy with angle grinder. So the deal is batteries maybe 265 in length. And from, I'm trying to see it, there it is for you. From this fitting on the power steering pump to here is only about 250. So we actually still need to come across 15 mils. It's about the center line of this hole, somewhere like that. And then the inner guard comes up quite significantly, which will raise the batteries and will run into this thing that stops the noise and um, and people and small animals getting in with all the noisy stuff here. So, a little bit of panel beating with a drift, a big hammer, and um, I will reshape the inner guard there. And I'll chop chop some more things um, and I'll make a new battery tray that goes up in there. And we should be right. We should be able to make them all fit. All right, that's enough of that. It is one significantly butchered battery tray area. So now I've got to make a new tray. I'll leave the original one in there. I'm going to tick weld all these areas. That side, that side. Not this side. Doesn't need it. Didn't have it from the factory. Does need some tidying up. Some yucky stuff in there. That's all going to be ground back and painted and all that sort of carry on you can't leave any exposed metal your know, batteries it won't do you any favors won't last long at all so i'm going to make a new tray out of whatever i've got it's probably 1.6 uh, panel steel to um, take the new position for the batteries that uh, appears to fit should work out all right i'll secure that to the actual body of the vehicle There'll be a hole there, there'll be a hole at this other end, and one in the middle. And we'll put a um, battery strap across the top, and the three anchoring studs, I guess you'd call them. Okay, a bit stinky in here. Just put some paint on everything there. Not the best paint job in the world, but it'll do for now. Three, um, like I say, three studs, so one, two, three, and they'll overlap in the middle, in theory, as long as I've got that all right. Um, and it all fits. So aside from a couple of electrical connections, I'm going to make an earth cable up. Might actually just buzz that straight over onto the manifold or something like that. There's an earth here that goes from the engine to the chassis. Um, apart from those little bits and bobs, that'll be it mobile again. There's still some other work to do. Busy tomorrow fixing an exhaust system on it. Ta-da! Magic done. He's a Peasley. Um, had to make a bracket to relocate our fusible links in here. Had to adjust this panel, shift the screw holes to move that to give us clearance between the battery and the panel. Um, it does need something to support this. 
we'll deal with that tomorrow. Uh, probably can actually just shift that down like that and put a P-clamp around that, under that screw hole, screw rather, and that will, that'll be perfect. Um, this assembly over here, which is a bunch of plugs and a big piece of plastic and all that sort of carry on, I've just put a P-clamp onto the battery location thing just to steady that, to stop it wriggling and jiggling. That'll be fine. That'll be good. It did have a small bracket onto the original battery tray thing that actually wouldn't have taken a lot of load anyway. So that's all taken care of. I'll put a bit of plaster seam on top of these and close the bonnet and just check that we are actually clear. We should be based on a piece of wire that I bent up, shaped it to the inside shape of the bonnet, put it back on there and, um, and checked and we've we're good there's not heaps of room but there is room and we've got this insulation under here anyway so we're definitely not just gonna arc out on the bonnet and have a fire straight away um big crash perhaps you you could potentially cause a problem if the bonnet decided to go down rather than up but i can't see that happening with the bars that are on the front of it so we're good as gold next up is sorting out the exhaust and we're doing something with the seats but that'll be another video so cheers for watching bye